Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, welcome to my channel if you are joining me for the first time today. My name is Lucy and as you can probably see by the title, today I am finally starting my How To Back To Basics series. What that basically means is I'm going to be going right back to the basics of makeup application and techniques and I'm going to be talking through with you so you can follow along and improve some of your techniques as well. The one technique that I'm asked about all the time is blending colours, specifically blending darker colours into lighter colours, just sort of blending eyeshadow in general. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for you today. If you are interested in hearing my techniques, tips and tricks and you want to follow along as well, then please do keep on watching. I want to start by saying I'm really sorry for the delay with this series. I know I said to you originally that I was going to start this at the beginning of 2021 and we are now almost in March. I have just not really had the motivation to sit down and do it. I've been thinking about it for a long time and I've been planning it out in my notes and in my diary. I just haven't really got around to filming it yet but I'm really excited to finally get started with it today and I really hope that this series will help a lot of you with your makeup application. As I just mentioned today I'm going to be starting with the most commonly asked technique which is blending my eyeshadows, specifically blending coloured eyeshadows and going from darker into lighter shadows. I have already done my eyebrows and carved underneath them so they are all prepped and ready to go. So all we have to do is the eye primer and then into the shadows. So let's get started. So the palette that I'm going to be using today is actually an old favourite of mine. You would have seen me use this a lot of times before on my channel but I haven't touched this in a hot minute. Like I'd say over a year I haven't used this palette and this is the Beauty Bay EYN Bright Matte Colour Palette. I used to absolutely adore this palette and I still do. It's just the fact that I've got so many other palettes in my collection now that I just don't reach for this one enough. The reason that I'm going to use this palette is because I know it is one that a lot of you guys might have at home already or if you don't have this specific palette you will probably have some of the colours in other palettes that I'm going to use today. The colour scheme that I'm going to go for today is actually sort of sunset colours. If you have previously watched my old tips and tricks videos you'd know that these are my favourite colours to use in terms of showing you how to blend because they are so different from each other. We go through purples into reds, oranges, yellows etc. So it's really easy to show the difference in the colours and sort of how to blend them without them all merging into one if that makes sense. So those are the colours I'm going to go for today. If you're watching and you want to use different colours then please go ahead. It's completely up to you what colours you want to use. So to start off any good eyeshadow look the most most important thing is to have a really good base down on your eyelid. You've got to make sure you're starting with a blank canvas which is completely ready for you to work on. If you're just going to go on top of your eyelids with no product you're going to guarantee that that pigmentation from those eyeshadows is not going to show up. So you've got to make sure you've got a really strong eyeshadow base down first. I'm sure if you've watched any of my videos in the past you will all know that the P. Louise base is my favourite eyeshadow base. I just cannot get enough of it and I use this in every single eyeshadow look ever. I'm going to be using the shade Rumour 2 on my eyelids today. I'm just going to apply a little bit of this to the back of my hand to begin with, like so. I'm just going to start by applying this product with the brush that I use to carve out my eyebrows first and just applying it all over my lid to make sure we've got an even layer going on. What I'm also going to do is take this out towards the temple of my eyes and just behind my eyebrow as well because you never know where the shadow is going to end up and you'd rather have that area primed and ready just in case it ends up there. I'm also going to be winging out my shadow to the side of my eye today hence I need this whole area covered with the eye primer just so that it's going to show up really nice and pigmented. Once we've got that layered down I'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush to pat this base in. This is the Molly O'Brien Tony M02 brush and I'm just going to pat this into my eye. It's really important that you pat it rather than swipe it into your eye if you want to keep the strongest pigmentation of your colours as possible. So now that that eye primer is all set down onto my lids, your eyelids will feel a little bit sticky and a bit tacky. That is actually a good thing. Don't worry about it too much at the minute. We want them to feel tacky so that when we put the eyeshadows on top, they're really going to stick to that eyeshadow base and really get the most pigmentation out of your shadows as possible. So don't worry too much if they are feeling a little bit sticky. If you are experiencing some creases through your eyelid creases, just grab your fluffy brush again and just lightly pat them away. You don't really need to swipe them or do much too them. 
Okay, so let's get started with the eyeshadow. So the first color that I'm gonna be taking from the palette today is actually a dark purple shade. I'm gonna go for this one down in the corner, which is the shade Drama Queen, which is a really deep sort of plum. The brush that I'm gonna start by using is the Morphe M152 brush, which is a nice sort of dense packing brush. The reason that I'm gonna go for a brush like this is so that I can really, really pack on that first shade and make it as dark and deep as possible. The more depth that you get from your first shade means that the rest of your colors are gonna look really nice and deep and vibrant on top of it. So I'm gonna really make sure I get as much pigmentation out of this dark color as possible. So I'm just gonna start by stamping this shade through my crease. I'm gonna start in the center of my eye and then just slowly stamp it towards the inner and outer corners of my eye to begin with. Stamping it will give you the most pigmentation possible. I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record saying that throughout the whole video, but it really, really does help if you stamp the product on as opposed to swiping it. When I've gotten to the outer corner of my eye, as I said earlier, I am gonna be winging my shadows to the side of my eye today. So what I'm gonna do is just start to stamp it out towards my eye and then flick it up towards my brow bone. Personally, I quite like a deep cut crease sort of shape. So that means that I'm gonna really sort of dip it in and then flick it back up towards my temples. Again, I'm not swiping the brush. I'm literally just patting this product into place and making sure that it's as deep as it possibly can be. Now that that color is all applied to my eye, what I'm gonna do is just take the same brush and I'm just gonna start by rubbing off any excess shadow onto the back of my hand. If you've got like a dirty cloth or any dirty clothes on that you don't mind getting dirty, you can just wipe it onto that instead. But I'm just gonna do it onto the back of my hand to get rid of as much excess shadow from the brush as I can. When I feel like most of the shadow is then off the brush, what I'm gonna do is just go back in right on top of where the outline of that purple shade is. And I'm just gonna go and sort of stamp across the the top of it and drag down into the color just to make sure it's blended a little bit. I'm literally just tapping really, really lightly over the outer edge of that color just to make sure the edges aren't so sort of harsh. I also forgot to mention the reason that I go so much higher than my natural crease line is personally because I really love a nice high sort of cut crease shape. I feel like it really, really opens up the eye if you can take it higher. If you feel like the high up shape doesn't work for your eyes, then please feel free to just go through your natural crease until you feel more confident working it up a little bit higher. But for me personally, I like to take it higher just so that I can get more of an exaggerated shape. I would say that making sure this shade is blended out first before going in with the next one is one of the most important steps of the whole blend. If you're gonna start going on top of the dark colors with light colors before they're even blended out yet, you're gonna find that you just have a harsh line of purple and it's not gonna go seamlessly into the next color. So make sure that this color is as blended out as it possibly can be first. Okay, so the next step of this blend is going to be our transitional sort of color. So the next step ideally that I'd like to go in with is orange, but obviously putting orange straight on top of purple isn't really gonna work. So I'm gonna let down a mid-tone sort of orangey red color just to submerge them into each other. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Head Over Heels, which is this red shade here over on the right hand side. I'm picking this up on a Morphe E36 brush. This is a really nice little dense but also really super fluffy brush which is perfect for packing the color on but also blending it out. One of the main things that I will say when it comes to colorful blends is that you want as small eyeshadow brushes as possible. As you can see with the ones that I've picked out to use today. They are all really, really tiny little brushes and you will never really find me using like a big sized eyeshadow brush like this, for instance, because you're never gonna get the precision that you want from the colors with a brush that's bigger than your eyelid. As you can see, I haven't really left myself with loads of room up above this purple shade here now. So what I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of red on that brush and what I'm gonna do is just stamp it over the very, very edge of that purple shade. I don't wanna take it up too high because this is only a transitional color but I'm just going to stamp it on top first and then we'll come to blending it out afterwards. Whoa. 
as I did previously with the purple shade, what I'm gonna do now is just take my brush and just rub off any excess shadows onto my hand. Just make sure that the brush is as clean as possible. Now I'm gonna come into my eye from an underneath low down angle. See how I'm not gonna go on top in line with the shadows like this. I'm coming from an underneath angle so that the top of the brush and the bottom of the brush are sort of blending the colors out, if that makes sense, because half of the brush is above the shadow and half of it is on the shadow. I'm literally gonna apply minimal, minimal pressure. And when I say minimal, I mean I'm barely, barely touching my eyelid. And I'm just going in with tiny, tiny back and forth and circular motions over the top of that red just to blend it out before we move on to the next color. and see how that just starts to blend it out really nice and lightly. I'm also just following that the whole width of the eyeshadow all the way back towards my temples. Now moving in with our next color, I'm gonna go for the shade Heat Wave, which is the brightest orange in the middle of this palette. And I'm taking this with the P. Louise number 124 blending brush. Again, this is a really tiny little sized brush. We don't want anything too big because we are losing space now near our brow bone. So I'm just taking tiny little brushes. I'm just gonna tap into that shade to pick up a little bit of product. You don't need to go swirling into the shadow because that's gonna pick up way too much color. You just sort of wanna tap it off and you can always build it up and add if you need to. Again, I'm gonna come in from the low down angle because that way it's gonna merge in with the red shade underneath, but also the blank space on top. So it's gonna give us a really nice seamless blend between the two. I'm using just one side of the brush at a time and I'm just gonna come in really lightly from the center of my eye and start just working that on top of the red. My camera died halfway through doing that orange blend, but as you can see, I just spent a couple of minutes blending out that orange to make sure it's really nice and seamless before I go in with the last shade, which is our yellow. Now, for me personally, when I'm doing a sunset sort of colored blend, I love when the yellow is really, really nice and bright and vibrant. So obviously I'm gonna be taking the yellow shade in this palette, which is Hello Sunshine, and I'm taking this on a small, dense brush, which is a Molly O'Brien Rowena M020 brush. This one is perfect for the yellow because it has quite a spiked tip, which means it's going to give us a really nice precise application, especially as we only have minimal room now because I'm right up to my brow bone. So just picking some up, tapping it off, and then we're going to go in really lightly again with that underneath angle. I also like to rest my little finger on my cheek just so I have a little bit more restricted movement because I don't want to go with a free hand and sort of mess up where I want to place the shadow. So resting my little finger on my cheek just helps me to get a really nice precise placement of it. As always, I like to start with my brow bone. So I'm just gonna go in there, half on top of the orange and half above the orange to create a really nice blend between the orange and the yellow. Holding the end of your brush as opposed to the top right near the brush head does also help to apply as little pressure as possible, which means you're gonna get more of a even seamless blend. So there is my yellow applied as vibrantly as I want it to be at the time being. As you can see, by applying the yellow on top, we have lost out on some of the other colors. So what I'm gonna do now is just go right back through from the start of the purple to the red, to the orange, to the yellow. And I'm just gonna build those colors back up so that they're not so lost into each other. This is why it's important to keep your brushes separate for different colors, because now I'm gonna go back in with all of the separate brushes which I've used and go back in with different colors. If you're using one brush for all of your colors, this step is gonna be really hard because they're all gonna merge into one. I've definitely lost out on my red shade, which was my transition. So I'm gonna go in first with the red on my small little brush again and just rebuild that back up. When it comes to blending, I also find it easier if you're looking downwards into a mirror as opposed to straight on. I also like to lift my head up slightly and I'm looking down so that I get the most out of my eyelid space. If you're looking straight ahead, as you can see, that really blocks off a lot of your eyelid space. So if you're leaning back with your head looking downwards, then that definitely opens up your lid space way more. Now I'm just going back in with my orange slightly and finally taking a little bit of that purple again and just tapping that over the top of the red to make sure it's really nice and deep looking. Now the final step of this blend is actually one of my top, top tips when it comes to blending eyeshadow. So what I love to do right at the very, very outer edge of the blend where it comes up towards your brow bone is grab a translucent pressed powder. This one is just a really nice cheap one from Rimmel 
but you could also use a loose powder or you could use a white eyeshadow as well if you have one in your palette. I just like to take this on a really, really small little fluffy blending brush. And then I'm just gonna go very, very lightly over the edges of that yellow with this powder. And you're gonna find that this really helps you to just seamlessly finish off that blend, no matter what colors you're using, even if you're using neutral colors. So this is as far as I'm gonna take the blending portion of this video. I really hope you guys have learned some tips on blending colors. The next part of the video I'm gonna do is going in with a solid sharp cut crease. So if you do wanna see how to create a really nice cut crease from this beautiful deep blend, then please do check back for my next video. As I said previously, please take your own spin on this video. I personally always like to start with the darkest shade first and work my way up to the lightest shade just to keep the vibrancy. I really want my colors to pop and I find that if you do it the other way around, you can often lose the darkest color. Please let me know down in the comments what other how-to basics videos you wanna see from me. It can be anything ranging from things like cream contouring or applying eyebrows or anything really. So just let me know what you'd like to see. For now, I'm gonna leave this video here. So thank you so much for watching my first part of my how-to series and I really hope you guys continue to watch the rest of them. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a big thumbs up and a comment down below and also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my future videos. Feel free also to follow me over on my Instagram which is LSG Makeup if you want to see more content from me and I'm going to leave this one here so thank you so much again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!